Hello and welcome to the Business Channel in association with SIBSI, the Chartered Institution of Building Services Engineers. Buildings account for almost 50% of damaging carbon emissions, yet innovative services design can bring dramatic improvements in energy efficiency. SIBSI members continue to create the most environmentally friendly systems in major projects across the globe. So what are the innovations that we're seeing in the way that buildings are engineered? And what are the solutions that can deliver savings in energy, lowering of carbon emissions and achieve efficiency for clients? We're seeing some interesting innovations in the way that buildings are being engineered at the moment. There are some obvious external ones. We see a lot of modern buildings which have steel uh, frames and lots of glazing and not so much of the more traditional materials and, and looks. Uh, but there's quite a lot of innovation happening inside buildings. Buildings are responsible for nearly half of carbon emissions uh, and of, of that slightly more comes from our homes than from where we work. But heating is the biggest single contributor to that. So um, anything we can do to reduce the amount of energy used on heating um, will help to cut our, our carbon footprint. SAS International is a leading British manufacturer of interior products, including energy efficient chilled beams and multi-service chilled beams, which are essentially room comfort products for refurb and new build. I spoke to the company's marketing director and also chairman of the Chilled Beams and Ceilings Association, Andrew Jackson. SAS International are a British construction products manufacturer. Uh, we manufacture metal ceiling systems, partitioning and doors, room comfort products such as chilled ceilings, active and passive chilled beams, but also bespoke architectural metalwork. Uh, we've been manufacturing in the UK for over 50 years and we have factories in Scotland, England and Wales. At SAS International we have a very comprehensive room comfort division. Uh, we design, manufacture and install uh, radiant chilled ceilings, active and passive chilled beams and radiant heating products. SAS International Room Comfort products can be used in a variety of different sectors, commercial office, uh, healthcare, uh, but also education and retail and leisure. The SAS International Room Comfort Division supply both new build and refurbishment projects. Uh, we want to ensure that the tenant or the building owner maximises their space, and often that means they have to refurb m and &E services in accordance with energy efficiency legislation. SAS International is a British manufacturer and R&D really drives everything that we do. We're stood here in our R&D laboratory which is 30 minutes outside London and we use this for projects across the world. It's not only our room comfort division that depends on developing products on a regular basis, uh, we also have our architecturally specified products uh, and we use really our, our R&D setup to ensure that both customers and specifiers can check the kind of mock-up products that they want in their buildings before they actually place an order with us. Uh, it keeps us competitive, it keeps us fresh, and uh, we want to remain number one in the market. Currently, innovation is being driven by the price of energy and making sure that buildings are energy efficient. Part our requirements uh, from the government basically are requiring that tenants and building owners make sure that their buildings are energy efficient and our products and systems have to be designed in accordance with their needs. Energy is getting more expensive to purchase and the reality is that 80% of energy use in a building is through its occupancy, not in the way it's built. So it's very, very important to utilise uh, the, the cooling products and the heating products within the building and ultimately then the occupant, the project team and the building owner will get better value from their building. Not only do SAS International supply a room comfort system, but we can also add value in other ways. We test it in accordance with the performance criteria of the project team. We can also install our products, which means you have, as a client, a single point of responsibility, design, supply and install. We're a privately owned British manufacturer who have invested heavily in R&D and testing facilities. We have the most up-to-date, innovative testing facilities in the UK. 
there are a number of things that we can do that are relatively simple and don't cost a great deal. One very simple thing, does somebody actually pay attention to how much energy you use month by month? And yes, there'll be variations because you use more, more heating energy in winter than you do in summer. You might, if you've got air conditioning, you will use more energy on that in the summer uh, than you do in the winter. But you ought to have an idea, how much energy are we using month by month? And you get into a second year, you can begin to compare. How did it do against last year? It's a very simple thing to do, but it can tell you a lot about how well your building's running. Loire Asylum is a leader in the European residential and commercial pump market and a subsidiary of the global world leader water company Xylem. I spoke to Sibsi Patron and Loire Asylum General Manager Duncan Lewis about the innovative solutions that they offer to the building services sector. We get involved in lots of different applications, so from today's point of view there's a lot of focus on sustainability, so we get involved with looking at new solutions such as rainwater harvesting. We also get involved in taking water away from buildings, so see what goes into a building goes out the other side, so from sewage applications. We also supply the water to your faucets or taps, as well as the heating and cooling systems. Now, can you tell me about the products and services that you offer to SIBSI members? In particular, is there any training or application support that you offer? Yeah, we offer a wide range of products and services. Obviously, from the service side of things, it involves the pre-sales and post-sales um, support. So from a pre-sales uh, point of view, today, one of the buzzwords is around the energy auditing. So we would go to a building and look at your system and decide how we believe we could improve your system efficiency we work with varying people to make that happen. In addition, we would also offer SIBSI members training, which are accredited CPD training sessions. Now, can you give me any case study examples of perhaps projects that you've worked on? We supply many products into wide varying applications. So many applications are in very large retail parks. Um, so many of the large supermarkets that you see in the high street we operate with, hotel chains. We also get involved in sports stadia, so a number of the Premier League football stadias will have our products in. Um, some examples would be the Celtic Park, which recently held the Ryder Cup. We also have been involved in many landmark buildings here in London, such as the HSBC Canary Wharf building. Now, innovation is, of course, very important to SIBSI members. Do you have any sort of new products or new technologies that you're really pioneering in the pipeline, as it were? Innovation is the cornerstone of Xylem Luara. We have many products that we have developed over the past years. A lot of this is driven by regulations, particularly at the moment we have certain regulations around buildings, such as BRIAM. We also have product regulations themselves, so ERP directive, as well as MEI directives, which are forcing ourselves to look at our new product portfolio to manufacture them in line with these new regulations. We, in the recent past, have developed new products around motor technology, variable speed technology, as well as hydraulic designs. Generally, what are some of the innovations that we're seeing in the way that buildings are engineered that are particularly catching your eye as being a really unusual and innovative way of doing things? At the moment, I think at the use of sustainability, um, so new technologies, things like geothermal, heat source pumps. We've also seen a lot more conversation and specification around rainwater harvesting, heat emitters, monitoring control. So there's a lot of things going on um, at the ground level of trying to make buildings more sustainable and related to that is the supply of pumps. What do you think is the single biggest win that building services engineers could go for when they're designing how to pump water or treat water in a residential or commercial buildings? I think at the moment what we see when we go around doing energy audits around many buildings is still a lot of old technology is being used. This may be fixed speed product or even going back to the belt driven pump solutions where today we can offer more efficient motors, more efficient uh, variable speed drives, which makes the system operate at its optimum points. Now, you've been involved in trying to get circulator pumps included in the Green Deal. Yes. Now, tell me about that. Yeah, we've been working alongside our pump association, which is called the BPMA, alongside other pump manufacturers of circulator pumps. And we've been working to try to lobby BRE, 
which um, are in charge of the Green Deal in order to get circulator pumps associated into the, into the Green Deal. We believe that if all the pumps that are installed today were changed over to the new regulations, more than one power station would not be needed. The Green Deal is a potentially very, very exciting opportunity. Huge amount of challenges uh, if we're really going to make it successful. Uh, but it does have the potential to break down those sort of boundaries between landlord and tenant. Typically, a uh, landlord isn't going to want to upgrade their building if they have to pay for it and their tenant sees all the benefit in terms of reduced energy costs. But the Green Deal could give them access to finance, uh, so no upfront cost to, to themselves. Uh, and instead those, um, that package of measures is paid for over a longer period of time. So potentially very, very helpful. Fronius UK are a European designer and manufacturer of battery charging, solar electronics and welding products. Let's now hear from the Solar Division's technical manager, Joseph Clark, talking about the photovoltaic and solar power technologies that they offer for monitoring and controlling energy. We offer solar inverters and these are the parts in a solar system which extract the energy from a solar panel. Uh, they optimise their electronics to get the maximum power available from that, while at the same time monitoring the national grid so that they can stay within statutory limits of grid voltage uh, and check that everything's safe to do so. Uh, and what percentage of, of buildings would you say have now got solar panels of some kind? Ever-increasing, it's a fairly hard statistic to find out, but people are realising now this is a, a proven technology that's been around for a considerable amount of time. Uh, it's not new, it's very reliable, very dependable, uh, quiet. You don't really see it if it's on uh, building roofs as opposed to these solar fields. Um, and so it's a great scenario instead of using fossil fuels. Now, are there any particularly high-profile case study examples of where your products have been used? Yeah, for, for Prestige you would look particularly, we were on King's Cross Station, had a, a brand new development uh, just opened last year, uh, Blackfriars Bridge also in London, um, but also we're on uh, many large roofs, we're seeing the big four supermarket chains uh, rolling out solar programmes, particularly on their very large distribution centres, so for instance Morrison's have a, an 800,000 square foot distribution centre opened up in the southwest, which have our products on the roof. Uh, there they use the energy to offset the um, energy which is needed for the refrigeration plant there. Now, you're more and more working in new build because of changes in regulations, but do you tend to do more retrofit or more new build, and are there any particular sectors that you work more in? There are some more retrofit than new build because the tariff is slightly higher, but uh, we're seeing more and more new builds taking this on uh, for various reasons, as well as the government tariff. Uh, there are more developments in building integrated PV products, so you have the likes of uh, domestic roofs, you can split the cost of the roof, so the area that the solar panel will take up is not being tiled also, so you're saving costs there. Uh, on a commercial level, there are companies who develop solar panel integrated into roof-mounted panels entirely, so for new build or for re-roofing retrofit products, uh, it's a very easy solution now. And would it tend to be more commercial or retail or hospitals or what would it be? Really any industrial roof space should be using this. It's the people who are willing to invest uh, in the future effectively, uh, particularly on industrial roof spaces. They're generally very strong. Uh, you can't see them because you usually have a parapet wall around the factory anyway uh, and there's really no reason not to. Now innovation is very important to SIBSI members and, and how do you help collect and monitor data from photovoltaic panels? Well, we have our own data logging uh, products which are at the forefront of the technology requirements of people. We have such things as wireless uh, communication, which everyone enjoys nowadays. But for the commercial element, we realise uh, the need for building management systems to have their integration with PV. And so we develop uh, interface products so that people can use standard protocols nowadays, such as the Modbus protocol, without having to use Fronius' own products. And what innovations are you seeing which you think are particularly exciting, particularly with reference to photovoltaic? Very exciting now is uh, the storage options which are coming out on the market and will continue to be enhanced over the next few years so that the, the power can not only be used when the sun's out but you can store that for use in the evening uh, or even if you broaden your horizon thinking about seasonal usage so you can store a vast amount of energy throughout the summer to be used in the winter months when, when the sun isn't so bright for us in uh, Europe. 
Now, what are the kind of costs and then the payback periods for your products in particular? Very, very vary depending on, on the size and the usage of the customer. Uh, I mean, in a domestic sense, we can see a 9.5% return on investment of your money for the system. Uh, in a commercial sense, um, it depends on the energy usage of the building. You could have systems, for example, which are just uh, going towards their energy usage. You could have your full energy usage from the, the solar system. Uh, and you can really move around your business energy needs in some cases. Uh, so we see the likes of uh, vehicles in buildings can be charged at different times of day, depending when the sun's out, and then use the free energy they've got rather than importing expensive energy from the grid. There are a number of reasons why buildings are changing. Now, some of that is that just as the clothes we wear change from season to season, so there are fashions and trends in building, and architects want to achieve different visual and aesthetic effects. But there are also changes in what goes on inside buildings, and they're probably more driven by the people who operate uh, and manage those buildings. And with all that's happening at the moment on energy pricing, on the carbon reduction commitment, which is effectively a carbon tax, although the Treasury doesn't want us to call it that, um, people are, pa are paying much more attention to the amount of energy used in buildings. And finance directors are starting to ask, how can we control those costs better? Vic Tolik is a global company based in the US that manufactures mechanical grooved piping systems. I spoke to the engineering specifications manager for the UK, Gareth Sherrington Boyd, about the advantages of installing this innovative solution over more traditional methods. Innovation is very important to us because it, it really is what sets us out as the market leader, as the world leader. We have numerous products that are, are, have been invented by us, uh, manufactured by us, um, that have uh, patents and, and cover, um, so it makes us very unique. Um, quicker ways to install, that's, a, that's, that's basically the crux of what we're trying to do. How can we cover as many bases as possible with as many conversations that we need to have in our job site cycle? So from the owner to the engineer, uh, to the building contractor, um, we have unique uh, opportunities for each sector to, to talk about. We bought a new product into the market uh, in the UK uh, maybe three years ago which it was a new um, uh, push-on coupling technology um, so rather than having to dismantle the, the coupling and the housings uh, lubricate the gasket on installation the product is actually manufactured as a push-on coupling um, needs no lubricant um, and is obviously 15 times quicker to install than the, the traditional coupling, which is obviously still quicker than traditional methods. So we, we've, we found the concept originally and we've, we've sort of tried to develop it and now we've found something new to even improve on, on something that we invented originally. And looking at innovation, even into the future, what innovations are we seeing in the way that buildings and particularly piping systems are constructed? With the, the, the construction market, it's more um, of a software uh, technology innovation. Um, we have a division within uh, Victolic called CPS, which is Construction Piping Services. They're a design team. So how it really works from, from my role, for example, is I will go and meet with a, a, an engineer um, at a uh, consulting practice in London. Uh, we'll discuss the project and really we can be involved uh, as early as possible. Um, the earlier the better, in fact. Um, we'll discuss the project and maybe we can take some drawings away. Um, and what CPS do is they'll analyse the drawings and they'll flip the drawing that they've got into a Victolic solution. And when I say software, um, we're very much heavily involved in BIM, um, which is Building Information Modelling, um, which is very much, a, 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 I see, a part of the, the future of the construction landscape. What do you see as driving innovation? Is it people trying to get the costs down or to become more sustainable? I think innovation being forced forward is, is a certain cost issue. You know, people are trying to uh, you know, build the buildings at, 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 at less cost. I think building schedule is massively important. The less time it takes you to, to build your building, the, the, the quicker you can put people in it and people you can start getting rent back. So I think really all of the above and I, I and also believe that you know a, a square meterage 
price of, of office space in, in London, uh, I think is probably at its highest at the moment. Um, and I think footprint and finding products that can do the job that you wanted it to do maybe 10 years ago, but for half the size. What are the costs and payback for innovative engineering for buildings in terms of the grooved piping systems? Um, well, it's sort of across the whole spectrum, really. Um, if you look at um, the owner or engineer conversation, obviously the engineer is representing his client and, and in specifying a, a Victolic system, um, what he gets is a, a, a building that's much easier to maintain long term. Um, it's very well talking about contractors building the building and scheduling and so on, but in 10 years' time, um, he, the owner of the building and the client still needs a building that works, he still needs uh, a certain amount of ma maintainability, um, and I think uh, with our products, it's a much easier system to maintain long term. Um, but on the job site, um, the, the answer is simple, it, it's schedule. Projects like Crossrail in, throughout London at the moment, um, there are certain times of the day that you're only allowed to work, um, therefore you can do more in your three hours a day than you would be able to um, with more traditional products. Um, and I think with our on-field and off-site fabrication capabilities and our design and BIM, um, uh, a much more pre-planned project um, is, is, is worth its weight in gold if, if managed properly. It's worth noting that of the buildings that will be around in 2050, probably about 60% of them exist today. So retrofitting existing buildings is as important as getting the new builds correct. So there's lots of new innovation needing to be made in how we can improve the performance of those existing buildings. I think facilities managers are increasingly engaged with this issue. Um, they see it not just as a sort of an obligation, but increasingly as an opportunity because it, it really um, uh, shows how central facilities management is uh, to uh, meeting a lot of these challenges. How we think about the cost of running a building and the cost of energy really depends on who we are. So if we've got a short-term lease, then we're not going to want to spend a lot of money on doing things to, to the property. If we're running an estate of a few hundred retail premises and we've either got lots of long-term leases or we own them, we're going to take a very different view. And we might still want to make sure they're well managed, but we'll start to think about the technical opportunities to cut energy use over maybe a 5, 10, 20 year period. The Nationwide Filter Company designs and manufactures air filtration products. Their Bacticel air filter cartridge was named the Air Conditioning Product of the Year 2012 at the h &V News Awards, the Oscars of the HVAC sector. I spoke to independent consultant Reg Cross who told me more. There are a number of very large facility management companies that are spending upwards of half a million pounds on air filtration products in any one year. Uh, we, as Nationwide, are a preferred supplier to a great number of these companies, and I would say um, certainly the market leaders within the UK. We also get involved in a number of individual projects, which we have just been involved with winning a contract on the south coast for a very large hospital. Um, I'd like to say we believe nothing to do with price. I'm sure our client would argue on that, but uh, he is quoted as saying he has selected it for the product, which was our Bacticel air filter cartridge product, which he believed and his company believed will offer the best value for money over the five year period for which we've been selected. Now, innovation is very important to SIBC members and we're always hearing of new products coming onto the market, new technology. Air filtration is a little bit different, isn't it, because it's basically the same technique for doing it. But do you have new products coming on the market? We have a product which we developed a number of years ago, which is being recognised more and more each day. Um, sales are increasing. Um, there is greater interest in the products. Um, we were delighted to win a couple of national awards last year 
for the product in particular. The product is our Bacticel air filtered cartridge. It has the ability to last up to three times, in some cases longer than three times, than the conventional bag filter. We use an additive called Bacti-G, which has the ability to eradicate a wide range of bacteria and microorganisms on contact. The fact that it offers this uh, additional life, coupled with the fact that the whole product is not disposable, as with the majority of air filtration products. The outer case, the shell of the cartridge remains, and it only requires replacement of individual cells. Now that in itself has further impact on the environmental issues, whereby we are just replacing or disposing of part of the product. It is far less than the conventional filters that have to be disposed, and it has to be disposed of far less frequently. So there is quite a saving when it comes um, to disposal. What are the kind of costs and payback uh, periods for your products in terms of particularly HVAC and SIPSI members using your products? In terms of direct cost, um, when we're looking at um, a high efficiency secondary air filter, um, which is really the category in which the Bacticel cartridge falls into, realistically we're looking at a cost factor of two and a half to three times greater than what I would call the low end uh, of the market bag filter. One of the things that is very important to consider is the whole life cycle cost, not just the initial purchase. One should be looking at the initial purchase price of course, but then they should be stacking that up with the, um, the life they're going to receive from that product. Um, also with the energy saving or the energy cost associated with the product they're using and more and more now um, the cost is getting higher for disposal of waste products and that should be taken into account. I think the biggest change that we need to see in the way that our building stock runs is not actually in the way we build it or the equipment we put in it, it's in the way we manage it and the way we control it. If we did that much better, we could cut UK energy use by anything from 10 to 20 percent. And when you look at some of the concerns around keeping the lights on, about having enough energy to go round in a few years' time, such simple things really ought to be much higher on people's list of priorities. So just managing it right. Um, we watch miles per gallon with our car. We ought to be watching the energy used in our buildings much more. So as we've seen today, innovation happens all along the supply chain, from the design stage, throughout production, to implementation and maintenance. They're all key to delivering more for less. And SIPSI members are at the heart of this drive to develop innovative solutions like the ones we've seen in this programme to achieve optimal building performance. Well, that's all we've got time for at the moment, but if you'd like to know more about any of the organisations that we featured on this programme, then visit our website, thebusinesschannel.tv. Bye-bye for now.